Oh yeah. Brooksville Canopy Roads. Beautiful. Those are my new little duckies I just got there. I've also got a unicorn and a ghost. Not a ghost, it's an alien. One thing I gotta say, the Ram 1500 versus the Gladiator. This is a 22 Rubicon with a three and a half inch lift. And I have to say, my Ram had a four inch lift. And I definitely have to say, the Ram, I call it swaying. It didn't sway nearly as much as the Jeeps do. This is now pretty much like a six months I've had this. Now I do have to say, it tows impressively for such a small tow rating. I do have to say that. Now, after experimenting with my buddy, because he's done everything with his Gladiator, and I do have to say that he actually turned me into the Gladiator because of everything he's done it is based on like a hybrid frame of a Ram and a Wrangler. It's got the full front, it, front full axle. Uh, I guess you'd say solid axle. Front end instead of independent suspension. But it is like a Ram rear end of the suspension, of the frame. So, it's actually quite comfortable to ride. The only thing being a full size man is... I'd have to say that your knee room, side to side, I believe it's like 20 something inches, 22 I believe, from my left knee touching the door to the 4x4 shifter. The uh, gladiators have the old school shifter. So, very nice though. Sometimes if you're doing go real quick, you're gonna smack the shifter back and now you're in four high versus waiting for the computer to do it with electronic shifting so it, it does have its advantages i have to say that it is nice to still have that lever the uh, lights on the trigger today that guy said not my light now one thing people are looking at the gladiators now my wife has a 22 no 23 silverado with the four cylinder turbo that's a 2.7 engine 2x4. It's a turbo four cylinder. Its tow rating is up in the 9,000. The Gladiator tow, tow rating is 4,000. Tow package, they bump it to 7,500, I believe, or 6,000, one to two. Now, my buddy has towed very heavy with his Gladiator, well beyond that 4,000. I'd say probably closer to seven a few times, maybe even a little higher. No problem. Now, I got a friend to let me use the Jeep, and we towed 8,500. And tell you what, it did it no problem at all. I mean, it was actually like it was designed to. I drive dump trucks and track the trailers for work, sometimes loader equipment operator, but I have to say it worked just like a dump truck would. It's going to do its revving, boom, 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 run through the gears, and that was it. Did excellent. Actually, very impressive. Never ran warm. Temperature gauge never went past that middle mark. It got close to the middle mark, but never beyond the middle. Never went past the halfway. So it was actually very impressive. And but the main thing, I mean, height-wise, I got room up here. Move the camera a little bit. I can put my hand. I've got some room. I'm 5'11". Back seat. I've sat in the back seat before, no problem at all. I got like a 31, 32 inch inseam, so back seat wise, I can fit back there, no problem. The bed does hold 
a decent amount of weight. So I have no complaints on that. And I know they only rated for like a 1,000, 1,200 pounds in the bed. And I found a guy on the Facebook marketplace giving away free brick papers and garden stuff. I loaded the whole damn bed up. I don't know how much it was, but I loaded the hell out of it. Now with the lift kit, it did squat because it's soft springs and shocks, but I wasn't overly worried. It handled great. It wasn't swaying in the back. Like it, it did very good. And the only, I mean, it's basically, in my opinion, it's like owning a 1500 or 2500 truck, but it's compact. It turns amazing. I was just teasing my wife today about that with her Silverado. We were coming at a tractor supply here in Brooksville. They got the, uh, I call them the Florida summer cones up, the construction cones. And her truck's just slightly too wide to make that left turn right there. But the Gladiator, because it's more compact, it's a Wrangler spec, basically. I just went straight through them, no problem. Was able to turn sharp enough Please to get in, boop, get right Don't over. Worry. And it was Doesn't great. Have to push the melon. It was great. It was really nice that in parking lots, the Gladiator is so nimble versus a full-size truck. So that's another thing that I give big props to with the Gladiator. Because that's one of the biggest things. You know, when I had my 3500, hated going to parking lots. I'd have to debate, like, or look at Google Maps. Okay, where where's my target parking area? And then if that's taken, oops, you're screwed. So... I do have to say it was very nice with the Gladiator. The only complaint I have, I wish Jeep would actually do, Fiat and whoever the one is called it now, is take the six cylinder out and put that 2.0 turbo in here. I have a feeling, it'd be my prediction, that down the road that's going to be an option for fuel economy. But driving having a 2.0 Wrangler and then now with a six cylinder Gladiator, I do have to say, I think the 2.0 would have been a much better option because the six cylinder just seems like it lacks the power and low end torque of that turbo engine. Just the truth. I take off, I have to rev this thing to four to 5,000 RPM to keep up with my wife's truck taking off and shifting at like 2,500. It's just, and she's got the tow package in her Silverado. So, it's just, this thing does not have low-end power, like another truck. And those Silverados got an 8-speed. Gearing is slightly on the higher end versus this one being more lower at 410. I think hers is like 370, but 373 or whatever it is. But it's just... You know, it's just the difference. It's, this does not have the low-end torque that has. That little turbo makes such a difference. And when I had the 3.0 diesel Wrangler, I will have to say it lacked compared to the gas 2.0. It really felt lacking. It had great torque, but on the top end, when you're going and you need to move, it lacked. It really was. It wasn't very impressive, in my opinion. And I have to say, overall, of all the vehicles I've had right now, my Ram with the Hemi was my favorite. And that's a true, honest opinion. It was fuel power, the gas mileage sucked, the horsepower was totally just amazing. It was always a Hemi when you got into it. And that was what I liked about it a lot. Fuel economy, yes, it sucked, but it was an amazing, comfortable ride. You didn't feel like your knees are closing. You had extra shoulder room if you wanted it, and it just towed well. I towed a 60-something Mustang from Florida to Tennessee, and never felt like there was a car back there, ever. And I know my buddy uses his Gladiator to tow cars. He likes to scrap cars and stuff, so he's got a setup for it. And he said it does quite well. You know, like he, he said his trailer is like 1,700 pounds, and the cars are usually three to 4,000. So he's towing five to six on the regular with 
this Gladiator. Tells me it does great, no issues, no problem. I know he's got a two axle trailer, most car holders are. And um, he said both have the uh, brakes. So I know he's doing that on the regular. And he has no complaints. <clears throat> but, you know, on the full size truck, you know, it just, that extra power from the engines were great. Even the four cylinder turbo in the wife Silverado, amazing. But I just don't know why the Gladiator they didn't do it. I think it's going to be a down the road thing. So hopefully it is because I think that would be an amazing push for the Gladiator. And that would be some reason down the road I do switch to it. But right now, I'm going to have to say I'm sticking to this right now because this is actually awesome. Hopefully, all the Facebook group, chat room horror stories are not correct because this 3.6 seems to eat cams and valves out worse than my Hemi. And the more I'm seeing it, the more it's like, damn. But hopefully, she's a good girl. And I do my maintenance well on the regular, so we'll see how it goes. Till then, up oh, here comes the rain. Oh, yeah. actually nice today. Got out lunch with the wife. Got out my Jeep and I get two ducks. One was a cow duck. It was actually pretty funny. I gotta say, I'm very impressed with that. Oh, here it comes. And one thing nice about the rain too is I came up to an accident and literally got had to go around the grass and stuff and the car in front of me almost got stuck. And I just kind of went around him like it was nothing. Just I realized I was getting into the soft stuff. I was doing about four miles an hour, just put the Jeep in four high, went right around him like it was nothing. And you know, the car behind me tried to follow me, got stuck. So that's pretty funny. I got the fiberglass roof on the Jeep, the white color match, and I have to say it is awesome. That is one thing I think people will miss out on if they don't have it because it blocks the heat amazingly. Right now in the south we're in hurricane season so almost every day it's raining like this and we're expecting a decent storm this evening so I have to wait and see how that goes but I like to have the doors off it's enjoyable. I do love on motorcycles so that's another reason I like having the doors off. You should have freedom to fresh air. Well, it looked like it was worse rain than it was. Don't know if you can hear it on the recording, but it's there. But it's just a sprinkle now. This idiot, don't try to do this. Most of the time, you see a Jaguar there, they are going to go for it. Let's see, curiosity. So, lifetime on the Jeep right now is still less than 5,000 miles, so it's very influential based on my last tank of fuel. But it's pretty bad. But hashtag G life. My ongoing average on my spreadsheet is 14, which doesn't reflect on this computer reading at all. So I don't understand that. But I use Google sp spreadsheet to keep a fuel log on my Phillips. But I only use the regular 87. I don't the uh, basically E10 blend. I don't do anything premium on it. I just go strictly by the owner's manual. And yes, if you live where I live, basically a toddler drew the streets. 
it makes it more interesting. All the turns and curves and stuff. That it does. This is probably one of the worst of the speed traps right here. Usually right up here between these fences on the side road to the cop run laser sometimes. Quite amusing. But I've kept the factory tires, factory rims. Just can't see spend that much money on it yet. Need more ideas. And I have noticed if you at least have the AC on, I think it's two? The auto start stop doesn't work. Yeah, two. So, that disables it. That little auxiliary battery is basically the major headache, apparently. So, I find that quite interesting. Well, you all have a good day. Take it easy. Peace out.